Marty Feldman Comedy Machine, starring, must be an identikit picture, Art Carney, American, no doubt, Joanne Flug, oh, another, Marsha Hunt, yet another, Ossie Bisa, West African, West Indian, Spike Milligan, ah, we're back to British rubbish. <laughs> you, sir. I'm afraid you'll have to take the breath test. Do you mind blowing into this? <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Film Greats. A series of visits with the wonderful men and women who played their parts in the legend that is, was, and will always be. The history of a Hollywood that was, but is no more, but lives on in the memories of those who have long since forgotten. <laughs> Tonight's film great, Justin St. Trust. One of the golden names of the silver screen, Justin St. Trust, who set women's hearts on fire in film after forgettable film. The reigning monarch of a celluloid kingdom and then the invention of sound. The moment movies began to talk, Justin St. Trust's silent voice became silent forever. <laughs> a man whose face had become a household word became a shadow of the past, deserted by dames, fame, and fortune. Tonight, here on Film Greats, we are privileged to have with us, making his first public appearance in almost a quarter of a century, a great human being, and a really tremendous has-been. <laughs> Glittering, silent film star, Justin St. Trust. <laughs> good evening, Justin St. Trust. It's so good of you to come. <laughs> May I say, first of all, how very excellent you look after all these years? <laughs> Mr. St. Trust. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me, to what do you attribute your huge success in silent films? <laughs> it seems incredible and remarkable that a career as remarkable and incredible as yours should have come to such an incredible and remarkable end. <laughs> I would can be a cruel town. <laughs> Who would you say was the one person in the industry who you most enjoyed working with? <laughs> Justin St. Trust, at this time and time, the past behind you and your future as well, any regrets?
St. Trust, a legend in his own time. It saddens me to have to tell the many fans and friends of Justin's that he died just one day before this interview was to have taken place. <laughs> Good night, and sincerely yours. <laughs> See, his thumb is on the window. Pull out, boy, pull out. Take your thumb off the window. This is pretty. You can't send up a plane with a kid like that. We've got no business being in the air. I, I, I shouldn't even be flying yet. I'm not, I'm not dry. Would you like to know where I'm wet? Don't just sit there. Do something. I can't. He glued my hand to the panel. Let me help you. Now you stick to the controls. I already am. <laughs> pull out, kid, pull out. How did I ever get into this? I'm not even a pilot. He pulled me out of a model tank. <laughs> 379 Panthers. You're a bloody Nazi. I was only a kit. I came with a model Spitfire kit. So, we're in this together, eh? Look! What? Oh! We say We say We say We say <laughs> <laughs> seated before my fireplace in my house when my daughter came to me and said father there is a letter which has come through the letter box for you and is now resting me, please, upon the door don't worry about me you carry on um. i said to my daughter fetch the letter i'm just looking for a seat I go on. yes please go on and my daughter brought me the letter not very comfortable up here though Excuse me, I'm just looking for a seat. You carry on. You carry on with the story. It's very nice. I like that. And my daughter Excuse brought me. me the letter. Excuse me, please. And I opened it. Pardon. Excuse me. And I read it. You go ahead. Excuse me, please. And the letter Excuse was me. a final I demand try sitting here, you from see, the gas board. I can see you quite well from here if I sit just there, you see. And surely... Now, I'm not as comfortable here as I thought of. I thought I would be much more comfortable here than I am. No. This is a sort of demand. A Excuse final me. demand. Um, is this seat occupied? One, uh, no, 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 thank you. You go ahead. That one day we shall all receive from the great gas border. Right. And now we will sing. I'm quite comfortable now. You go ahead, don't worry about me. We shall now sing. I'm enjoying it. Hymn number 211. Omitting verses three and four. Oh, well, uh, you're, you're omitting those verses, are you? Yes. Oh, I'm glad you're not leaving them out. We are <laughs> omitting them. Oh, good. Well, I'll omit them very loudly, though, yes, shall I? But In you... four-part harmony, I'll omit them. We are leaving out verses three and four. Couldn't you leave out verses one and two instead? No. You see, because I don't like them. They go on about sheep. And I did once have a very nasty experience with the sheep in Ketchum. Would it make you happy if we left out verses one and two? Oh, no. uh, yes. Very well, then. We will now sing hymn number 211, omitting verses one, two, three, and four. Uh, and, and five. And, and five. five. I won't have verse five. Excuse me, please. I won't have verse five any price, you see because it goes on about the sea, and I was once sick on a tram coming back from the seaside, you see. How do you feel about verse six? Not keen. All right, then. <clears throat> Hymn number 211, omitting verses one, two, three, four, five, and six. And seven. And seven. <laughs> there, there are only seven verses. Oh, um, what well, do you do requests? Requests? <laughs> 
What sort of request did you have in mind? Well, I, I don't know what it's called, but it goes... In the morning... Which is cold. No, 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 in the morning. There's no coat in it. I remember Which it is cool. In the morning. Go, Which you know, is cold. Cool. Please, remember where you are. Look, I put my button in the plate. I've got as much right here as you have, mate. Please. <laughs> what would you have us sing? In the morning. Which is cold. No, there's no coat in it. No, 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 uh, there's pigs in it, and a Scotchman, um, Engelbert Humperdinck sings it, out of tune. Do we know anything about pigs and a Scotsman that Mr. Engelbert Humperdinck sings? Uh, out of tune. Out of tune. Uh, uh, don't worry, Your Reverence, I know it intimately. Wait a moment, I'll lead the congregation, shall all right, I? All right, all right. After four, then. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. We opened this shop 43 years ago, sir. Fast customer? Yes, sir. I mean, there's not much call for newspapers on a deserted island, sir. <laughs> but it's a busy main street. Oh, if only I could come to terms with reality, sir. Well, I'm in a hurry. Can I like a copy of the time? Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, Iran you can breed as time, sir. Uh, time? How about the, the Lincolnshire cactus tasting time, do I, sir? <laughs> this month's special pull-out playmate of the month, sir. A kangaroo in full frontal nudity, so it counts and we All I've got is the Times Times, the famous national newspaper, the Times, the Times, the Times. I'm not sure I can let you have one of those, sir, not in your state of health. If I offer to pay, you'll jolly well have to let me There's have one. There's no need to use that tone of voice with me, sir. I shall call the police and have myself arrested. How oh, dare I can be very dangerous when I'm aroused, sir. Right, well... I'd better take your measurements in and out of here. Uh, could you get your arms up in the air, sir? The arms, arms up. Thank you, sir. Right. Chest, 38. <laughs> Shoe size, two and a half. You must be mad going round in them proportions. Look here, what's your act size? Well, I'm getting out of here. No, no, <laughs> We're closed for lunch, sir. You don't ever let me out of here. Uh, at last, I can practice my salesmanship, sir. Uh, how would you like a nice copy, sir, of, of Teenage Fun? With this month, sir, absolutely free, a year's supply of acne. Oh, I have an order at my chemist. Uh, so you could do this nice fun quiz here, sir. Am I a lively personality? Oh, I'm not I did it. I found out I was dead, sir, yes. I'm not interested in all this frivolity. How about the Royal Perversion Society's annual monthly, sir? <laughs> Comes complete with a map of every park in every major city, sir. What? <laughs> One step more, and I shall assault you with this copy of Karate Chopper's Fortnightly. <laughs> I could finish you off with one blow to the neck from page 38, sir. Now, look here! <laughs> I am not going to buy any of your trash. There must be something you'd like, sir. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I've got it. How about, how about, how about cookery, sir? There, I like, sir. 101 things a boy can do with a turnip, they are, sir. No, 102. That looks painful, but I'm sure it's delicious. No. All I want is the newspaper. Oh, well, there must be something you'd like to buy. I'm a desperate man, sir. I'd have died of starvation three times, only I couldn't afford a funeral, sir. How'd you like to buy my shirt, sir? No. Nice shirt. Nice pair of socks, sir. No. Underwear. How you fix for spare feet, sir? You can have the entire shop for a fiver, sir. No. What? Oh. 
You've broken down my willpower. I only hope you can live with your conscience, sir. Is there any particular day you'd like, sir? <laughs> Today? Well, the only copy I've got here, sir, is for January the 34th, 1943, sir. <laughs> Shall I wrap it for you, sir? Don't bother. I'll eat it here. <laughs> by special request, a return visit of the world-famous Irish tenor, Schizophrenia, who will sing a Gaelic song.
Great moments in history. The invention of the suspended trouser brace. Daddy dear, you've been thinking all morning. Eh? You'll wear yourself out. I have not thought of a new invention in months. Don't fret, dear dad. You know that your best ideas have come to you out of the blue. Quite right. I think I'll have a peer out the window. <laughs> Some of my best inventions have been so obvious, one wonders why they've never been thought of before. <laughs> oh, Daddy, Inspector Trench is due here any minute. No. Uh. He said it was urgent business. Oh, uh, again then. You're such a help to me, daughter. I only wish your mother was alive today. She is. Then cancel the funeral. No, no, on second thoughts, cancel your mother. I've paid for the tombstone. Come in! It's Inspector Trench, Daddy. Sorry, yes. guys, Inspector Trench. May All I right. shake your hand? Go right ahead, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Day, Mr. Mr. Day, Mr. Cole. Mr. Day, uh, come and warm yourself by my daughter, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, I'll get you a drink, Inspector. <laughs> you. You rang. <laughs> No, no ring. If you must know, it was the bell. Oh, oh God! When you ring, you go. A word. Two o'clock. Was it one o'clock twice? Hold ring. Yes, sir. A whiskey for the inspector. He needs one. Yes, sir. And a bath for yourself. Yes, sir. Not worth having him dry cleaned at his age. <laughs> No, no, he died three years ago, you know, but I haven't had the heart to tell him. The shot would kill him. The dead. I shall come straight to the point. Come straight to the point. The James, he's struck again. Oh. Who? This isn't for a young girl's ears. Where are these? They belong to your mother. She was a man of the world. <laughs> hurry, man, hurry. Coming with all speed, yeah. You were saying, Inspector? There can be no doubt about it, Sir James. He's struck again. <laughs> Who? The Hyde Park trouser snatcher. <laughs> bum, bum, ba, 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 ba. Thank you, Mulroy. How did this happen, man? I went to the um, um, No, 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 no. The Hyde Park. I tell you, sir. I can feel a flashback coming on. Oh, I better change the sheet then. <laughs> You should take something for those flashbacks, Inspector. Oh, I did that a couple of years ago. Let me tell you about it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not now. You were saying? The trouser snatcher, Sir James. You must come up with an answer to this obscene problem. I have. It's an obscene answer. It's here on my impossibly cluttered desk somewhere. Okay. Ah, 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 here they are. Ah, 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 what do you think of these, then? Look. Ah, like that, you see. Good uh, Lord. Rather saucy, uh, eh? Yes, saucy. Yeah. Right, thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. They took right on like that. Like that, yes. Clever. Clever. Aha. Uh -huh. My word. 
And you shall be the first man in the world to try them out. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir James. Cure mouldering. Yum, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> oh, it rained that afternoon as I lurked in Hyde Park, waiting for the trouser snatcher. And then you return to my residence with the shocking news. I've just returned to your residence for the shocking news. Bring it in and put it down on the carpet. Look, oh, oh. my trousers stealing device. Oh. It's shock. Look what they've done to my trousers. Good heavens. Pull them down, man. You'll be arrested for indecent enclosure. No, it, it gives me a sense of, of freedom and, and leg power. It's, it's unnatural. It's sinful. It's the work of the devil. Oh, it's not too unpleasant once you get the hang of it. If the good Lord had meant us to wear trousers, he'd have given us tweed legs, yeah. man. Try it, Sir James. No, I don't think I ought to. That's it. Come on. Now ring. Go, boy. That's it. All right, sir. Together. Hear the difference already, sir. Oh, how about that? How about that? Freedom and leg power. It's living. What's that? It's the telephone. Invented just in time. Right. Answer it, murdering. Hello, little telephone. Uh, pick it up, pick it up. Oh, hello. Hello, little telephone. What's it say? Bad news, sir. The Queen Victoria is dead. I thought she was quiet at breakfast. <laughs> How tragic. The Queen dead. And never saw a man with his trousers up. My word. Gentlemen. <laughs> The Queen. Oh, oh. Boy, come on, come on, get out of there. Come on, out you come. I'm afraid you'll have to take the breath test, sir. Do you mind blowing into that? December 25th, 1968. Somewhere in London. <laughs> yes, a card makes Christmas complete.
Johnny said. Drunk and drink. And a good evening to you all, ladies and gentlemen. This is Arthur Clough welcoming you and yours to the last night of what has been some of the most exciting beard straining in the annals of hair. <laughs> Tonight, this great hall is virtually a throb to the question that is uppermost in everyone's mouth, which of our finalists will win that highly prized, most coveted award, the Golden Beard of the Year? Before we meet tonight's finalists, let me explain to those few who may not understand the simple rules of international beard straining. Firstly, each contestant, regardless of race, creed, or sex, must start with an absolutely clean chin. He then has three strains of 40 seconds duration in which to grow any beard of his choice. And the first contestant is Lord Cannington Green. Lord Carrington Briggs from the host country is going to start us off. His lordship is that to overcome a tremendous handicap in this contest, since you will notice he has no chin. <laughs> warming up now, warming up. Lord. Warming up. He's clean, ready now. <laughs> muscles, taut, firm. Stepping on to the straining print, where the referee, Barney Loomis, will check for any signs of stubble that might. <laughs> What's that now? His lordship started. So he's trained for a King George V. King George V. Nearly done it. Nearly done it. Almost there. Just the moustache now. Working on the moustache now. And there it is. Well done, your lordship. Funny Lewis. Him is coming in now to make sure it's a beard. Yes, it is a beard. Let's see what the judges have to say. Here's their scoring. Five for speed, three for texture, and one for originality. So for Great Britain, it's nine points out of a possible 30. Well, on we go with our next contestant then. From the Republic of Ireland, Seamus O'Hooligan. <laughs> Seamus O'Hooligan has been training in the mountains of Morn for four years under strict supervision of a Catholic priest. The hooligan says, and I quote, I am going to win, unquote. The young man is an unknown quantity. He's a part-time ballet dancer and vicar's mate, and he's hoping to turn pro after tonight. He's warming up now, as you can see. Very, very thorough, this hooligan, and a little frightening. Definitely a non-conformist. He's in good form, making sure his sinus cavities are clear. Just finished working the tongue muscles. Very frustrating. No, no, it seems that it's a false start. False start, now. Referee agrees. He's not pleased with that at all. Now he's going to try again. A little more warming up. Now I believe that, yes, he's going for a, a George Bernard Shaw. A, a difficult number, the Bernard Shaw. Red hair is needed. Nothing best will do. Straining, yes, yes, nicely, nicely. Looks like he's done it. Uh-oh. No, it's black. It's black, and the referee has noticed it. It should have been red. The judges are sportingly giving him just one point for his clean underwear. <laughs> Thank you, John. Oh, I, I've just been informed that uh, Monsieur Laplau, the French contestant, will be using the French anti-knee trembling device with the traditional Gallic nerves clench, and everyone here wishes him every luck in the world. Now, he's mounting his device, and the straining begins. Oh, this is wonderful stuff. Yes, yes, uh, I might say this is beard straining at its best. Marvelous. Marvellous. Look at him go. Look at him go. Tremendous effort, ladies and gentlemen. Really, really great. Really marvellous. And look at it go. Look at it go, ladies and gentlemen. We've never seen anything in beer training like this. Even the referee is caught up in the spirit and the hair. Uh, this is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, we've never seen anything in beard training contest before uh, to equal this. And it brings it down to the last contestant, the Spaniard, Senor Gasbel. I think it's clearly between the senior and the Frenchman. Uh, he looks clearly determined to put on a great last race. There he goes, and it's a blue beer. It's a blue... Uh, what's his shaking head over? Oh, I, th I, th I think he's going... Oh, he's lost. He's lost. I think he meant to, and he's going on. What's he giving us? A stone. And he's not finished yet. Though. He's gone down. What's that? It. Beautiful stone. Now, what's he trying? But he's... It's a reverse... Looks like a reverse spinning stone to me. The man is a master. Yes, it is. A reverse stone. Going into... Uh, now, he's... Fit no, it's a Fu Manchu. 
Never, never before have I seen anything like this. Fu man too with variations. Oh, this is tremendous stuff. Let me see now. Oh, oh Barney Loomis seems to be involved here. Yes, the referee is involved. No doubt. Oh, it's a Fu man too with a branch beer. Never, ladies and gentlemen, I have never, never. He's recovered it. I must say, this is this is most unusual in beard training. I've never seen anything like this. Wait a minute, he's done the Charlie Chaplin. But no, this spunky little man is not through yet at all. The man has a fountain of hair and it seems to be growing as he's straining each minute. Oh, there can be no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. This man will win the beard training contest of the current year. We have never seen anything like this. So inspiring, one might almost say disgusting. Still straining, still straining. Uh, Senor Gastel is going all out tonight like he's never done before. I have never, never seen anything like this in him. Referee, there, there, there's Bobby Lewis paying him the golden beard of the year. There he is, the golden beard of the year. A credit to his people, the world's reigning strainer, who has done the main strain, and is mainly from Spain. And here at Mission Control, the countdown is proceeding. It's five, four, three, two, one, and we have liftoff! It's liftoff! <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye! Goodbye. 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 Goodb